One of the important things to remember when we design sketching is that our sketch is going to look rough and incomplete for the majority of the process. It only really starts to take shape when it's nearing completion. The early stages are just as important as the final ones, and if we're going to be satisfied with our finished sketch, we need to use the right building blocks along the way. The first of these building blocks is to match the proportions of our sketch to the proportions of the object we're sketching. We do this by constructing our shape within a box, even if our shape's made entirely of curves, as it is in this example. Now the box doesn't need to be neat, but it does need to match the proportions of the product we're sketching pretty accurately if we're going to give ourselves the best chance of success. As I'm mapping out the shape with light construction lines, with the pen barely making a mark on the paper, I'm giving myself several attempts at getting my lines to reasonably represent the shape of the object. I'm looking carefully at the chair and trying to match the angles, the curves, the slopes. It's only when I'm happy that I've managed to do this with my construction lines that I move on to the next step, which is to choose which construction lines I want to make heavier. For each of the lines I choose to darken, there are probably six or eight construction lines left untouched. I'm just choosing the ones which I think are in the right sort of place. It's then time to move on to the next stage, which is to add colour. So I'm starting with a base colour that covers the whole sketch. I'm going on to use light and dark tones to represent shape, and I'm starting with a darker pen to suggest that the surfaces of the chair are curved. On top of ambient lighting, I've imagined there's a light source that's positioned somewhere to the right hand side of the chair and somewhere back in the scene. The light from this source isn't reaching all of the chair because some of it's blocked by the chair itself, so I'm building the darker tones on the surfaces that are more hidden from the light source, and I'm saving the darkest tones for the areas that are most hidden from the light source. Now a sketch works best when there's a good range of tones from light to dark. The broader the range, the more depth there is in a sketch. Depending upon the materials we're representing, we might even stretch our range of tones all the way from black to white. So my base layer was a mid-tone, I've added darker tones, and now I'm adding white pencil. This particular pencil is great for extending the range of tones because I can blend the powdery residue it leaves with a finger. There's a link to this pencil and the white pen I use in a moment in the description below. Before I talk through the finishing touches of this sketch, if you found this video of value, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notifications tab to be the first to see my videos as they're uploaded. Now the addition of a cast shadow is great for anchoring a sketch to the page. The process gives authority to a sketch and the depth of tone in a shadow can really make an object pop up off the page. You can see that I'm working around my sketch, looking for ways to increase the range of my tones. I'm looking for areas that I can throw backwards into the page with darker tones, and ones that I can pull towards me with lighter ones. And finally, I'm adding white areas of reflection to communicate that the chair is made from a shiny material. Now to build more confidence in your design sketching, click this link next.